Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's lesson about elementary reactions. Wouldn't it be nice if chemical reactions proceeded exactly like they're written? Well, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Most chemical reactions, when they're written in an equation, do not proceed directly from reactants to products. What do we mean by that? It means that reactions occur in steps. And these steps, sometimes, some of those steps are faster than others. And of course, uh, an elementary step is a step where the reactants proceed to the products in the manner directly described by the equation. So a rate expression can be derived from that elementary reaction if it is the slowest possible step. So the rate is proportional to the product of the concentrations of the substances in the rate limiting step. So we're going to consider a unimolecular elementary reaction, which means there's only one particle involved, a molecule, an ion, an atom. So they involve the reaction of single particles. Single particle A in this example is changing to two particles, C and D, so something is splitting apart something like hydrogen peroxide changing into water and oxygen. So uh, we can derive a rate expression of this for R equals K times concentration of A, in it, if indeed that was an elementary step. And the weighting factor you can see also is for A, it is minus one because it's being consumed, where the minus one comes from. Now, uh, a bimolecular reaction involves two things colliding. So uh, still a fair probability that two particles can collide. They can be two atoms, two ions, two molecules, or any combination thereof. So in this case, two particles of A have to collide with sufficient energy at the right angle to produce the products C and D. So this could be two hydrogen chloride molecules colliding and producing hydrogen molecules and chlorine molecules. So the overall rate in this case, if that was an elementary reaction, meaning it proceeds directly from reactants to products as written, then R would equal K times the concentration of A squared. Again, the uh, weighting factor or nu is minus two here. So the overall rate is one over minus two times the rate of change of A over DT because the rate that A is being consumed is twice the overall rate. That's why we take half of it. The rate of consumption of A is, uh, like I said, twice. And for the reaction, A plus B produces C. The overall rate, the weighting factor here is minus one for A. And it's, it's also minus one for B. So again, we could say the overall rate is equal to the rate of consumption of A, which is equal to the rate of consumption of B, which is equal also to the rate of appearance of C. Now, remember for an elementary reaction, uh, in this case, A and B producing C and D, the overall rate for the forward reaction for this elementary reaction would be R equals K times the concentration of reactant A raised to the power of A times the concentration of reactant B raised to the power of B. And again, we look at the, uh, the factor, the weighting factor would, for A would be minus A and for B would be minus B. And we look at the rate of consumption of A, dA over dT, or for B, dB over dT. And we could also look at the rate of appearance of C and uh, establish that the weighting factor nu for C is, is, is little c, and the weighting factor for D is little d. They're both positive because they're being produced. So remember, the concentration of any of these would be given as moles per liter of D, if it was D. Or we could simply use molarity, which means moles per liter. So the rate could be expressed as moles per liter per second of reaction. Now, reaction mechanism. Very, very difficult to determine reaction mechanisms. 
fact, very few chemical reactions have been analyzed to the point where they can figure out reaction mechanisms. So many reactions occur in a sequence of steps. And some of those intermediates and those steps last for very, very short periods of time and are virtually impossible to detect easily. So we um, can look at the overall reaction and sometimes deduce a reaction mechanism based on experimentation that's done. So oftentimes in these reactions, you have intermediates that are produced, which are produced from initial steps and then consumed in later steps, but do not appear in the overall equation. Now, the slowest step, if a reaction occurs in a series of steps, will be the rate determining step. For instance, if I'm stapling exams and I have another person, it's a 10 page exam, and I have somebody who's collecting the 10 pages, doesn't matter how fast I collect the 10 pages. When I staple, there's only one stapler. And the, whichever event is the slowest is going to limit the rate of the overall um, situation. So here we have a chemical reaction where A and B are producing C, D, and E. And this particular overall reaction could be represented by different steps. So for instance, in the first step, A could be converted into C and F. In a second step, F, an intermediate, could be reacting with B and making D and E. And of course, when we look at the two steps, the slower step is step one, the faster step is step two. Notice I could arrive at the overall equation for the expression for the chemical reaction by simply canceling out F from the reactant side in this case and the product side in this case. And when I add these two reactions now, A added to B are reactants, C, D, and E are products, we end up with the overall equation. But if I was looking at the rate limiting step, I would only consider the slow step. So the rate limiting step would determine the rate equation. So the rate equation based on this mechanism, this slow elementary step, and this fast elementary step would be R equals K times the concentration of A to the power of one, because there's only one here. So note that when you arrive at a rate expression, you use the slowest elementary step known. You don't use the overall equation. Now let's look at another example. A reaction mechanism is shown below. Here we have nitrogen dioxide changing into nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide. And this step happens to be slow. Well, in a much faster step, one of the products of the first step, NO3, is now going to combine with another reactant, carbon monoxide. And it makes nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide in a fast step. Well, if I add these two up, I can see that two NO2s on the left, one NO2 on the right, simplifies to one NO2. You can also see that at the NO3 on the left, the nitrogen trioxide on the left, and the nitrogen trioxide on the right are going to eliminate each other. And what I'm left with is NO and CO2. So steps one and two are both what we call elementary because they proceed as written. There's no intermediate here. We're going 2NO2 is going directly to NO3 and NO, and that's what we mean by an elementary step. Step two is an elementary step, but the overall equation is not an elementary step. It does not proceed directly from NO2 and CO to NO and CO2. It goes through those two steps. So the intermediate in this case is a substance that doesn't appear in the overall equation but it does appear in the intermediate steps. So the intermediate steps, NO3, nitrogen trioxide, is an intermediate. So step one is a rate determining step. It's because it's the slowest, and the overall rate in this case, using the slow step, would be R equals K times concentration of NO2 squared, because it's the overall step. 
and the rate of consumption of NO2 would be minus uh, the rate of change of the NO2 over time, and it would be twice the overall rate. Now, NO2, remember, is being consumed, and it's being consumed at twice the rate, so the weighting factor is minus two. Now, in summary, each step in a reaction mechanism is made up of the elementary react reaction because reactants go directly to products. However, the overall reaction is not elementary because it doesn't proceed according to the written equation. You cannot derive a rate expression again from the overall chemical reaction because the overall chemical reaction does not reveal the elementary steps that could be happening intermediately. So the rate expression has to be determined experimentally again using first rates and a reaction intermediate that could be formed and used up might be very difficult to find. Now there are techniques I'll discuss later that how that could happen. So when we look at kinetics and chemical equilibria, we are going to again talk about rate constants or the various steps involved. So consider an elementary reaction where two A molecules collide and produce C and D. Now again, this could be an example of two hydrogen chloride molecules colliding and making hydrogen and chlorine. The rate of the Ford reaction would always equal a rate, con a rate constant K times a concentration of A squared. That's because this is an elementary step. It goes directly from reactants to products as written. And the rate of the reverse reaction would be the concentration of C times D times K, K reverse. Now, if we look at a graph of concentration versus time, we can see that the one that's decreasing, well, that must be A because A is being used up. And C and D could be represented by the second curve going upward. You can see that eventually the rates, the concentrations don't change anymore. The rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse reaction must be equal in this case. So that happens when we, uh, when that happens, we say the system is at equilibrium. So the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse action uh, reaction are equal. So when that happens, K forward times concentration A2 must equal K reverse times concentration C times D. That happens in this part of this curve. So it would start maybe around here at that time. Now the equilibrium constant could be determined by simply uh, rearranging this equation and taking, dividing both sides by the concentration of A squared and dividing both sides by the K of the reverse. And what we get is an expression that says K, equilibrium constant, is the K of the forward reaction divided by the K of the reverse reaction, which equals the products divided by the reactants to the power of two in this case for A because of the elementary step involving two A's. We call this expression here, the law of mass action. It works even when the reaction is not elementary, the law of mass action. We can use an overall equation for an equilibrium to derive an equilibrium expression. Now let's look at the rate expression for non-elementary reactions with known reaction mechanisms. So here is a reaction, 2NO gas molecules, nitrogen monoxide is combining with hydrogen gas making nitrogen gas and water. Now, this on the surface, when you look at this overall reaction, it doesn't seem very probable. What is the probability that four particles are gonna collide simultaneously? If you watch traffic go by, what's the probability you're gonna see four objects, four cars colliding at the same time? I venture guess you could sit there and watch traffic for the rest of your life and maybe never watch that. Unless, of course, you were on the 401 during a whiteout, uh, that might happen. But a very, very rare occasion when four um, objects collide. So very small. So 
we're going to suggest that this particular reaction has a mechanism. There's got to be intermediate steps. So the overall equilibrium expression would be determined by taking the concentration of N2, multiplying by the concentration of water squared, and dividing it by the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of H2. Again, the law of mass action. So now the overall K is related to the K values for each step in the mechanism. So we'll, let's take a look here. So at equilibrium, each step in the mechanism is at equilibrium. And forward and reverse rates are also equal. So let's take a closer look at this particular equilibrium. So in the first step, two NO molecules collide. They make an intermediate of N2O4, uh, N2O2, dinitrogen dioxide. So the K value for the first step would be the concentration of NO2 divided by the concentration of NO squared. Now, let's look at a second step involving the intermediate. Because remember, the intermediate does, can't appear. An intermediate is something that doesn't appear in the overall equation. So the dinitrogen dioxide reacts with hydrogen, and it produces not, uh, dinitrogen oxide, also called nitrous oxide, and water. Laughing gas, of course, is this material. And the K value for the second step would be the concentration of N2O times the concentration of water divided by the concentration of H2 divided by the concentration of N2O2. There you are. So there's K2. Now, step three. Some of the N2O reacts with hydrogen. The uh, laughing gas, nitrous oxide, reacts with hydrogen and makes nitrogen and water. So. Notice now we've arrived at our final products. And the K for step three is the concentration of nitrogen multiplied by the concentration of water, divided by the concentration of N, uh, laughing gas, N2O, divided by the concentration of H2. So to obtain the overall reaction, you can combine all three of those steps. And to find the K value, you could multiply the K of step one times the K of step two times the K of step three. So let's do that. So the K, remember, for the first step was the forward reaction over the reverse reaction, and similarly for step two and step three. So we look at these expressions. There is the K value for step one times the K value for step two times the K value for step three. Now, can we simplify this expression in any way? Well, I think we can. We can simply see that the intermediate N2O2 is present in both numerator and denominator. We can also see the intermediate N2O, the nitrous oxide, is present in numerator and denominator. And lo and behold, look what we're left with. We group H2O and H2O, and we get H2O squared. And then we get N2. We also group H2 uh, hydrogen gas. There's two of them. So we're going to make it H2 times H2, H squared. And again, here's our equilibrium expression. This is the same equilibrium expression you get if you use the overall reaction. And the overall K value would be K1 times K2 times K3. So in real life, to find a mechanism is very difficult. One way is to quench the reaction by rapidly cooling it by dropping in the liquid nitrogen, liquid helium, which is just below, just above absolute zero. That's minus 273 degrees Celsius. Brr, that is cold. And then to look at the species present. Okay, intermediates can be detected, but usually people have a gut feeling when they look at a reaction to search for particular intermediates. One way is to use uh, high-speed lasers. We now have high-speed lasers that can flash at extremely uh, short time intervals. In fact, some reaction mechanisms have been detected to be happening over time frames of femtoseconds. You might not have heard that term before, but a femtosecond is to, a, is to one second what one second is to 100 million years. Think about that. That's how fast some of these reaction steps happen. And 
we can use high-speed lasers firing at those speeds to detect potential intermediates that would otherwise never be detected because every substance will absorb and re-emit energy in a characteristic way. So this is a technique where intermediates can be found. So first or next, we're going to look at a mechanism with a slow step followed by a fast step. This type of analysis is quite easy because you can measure the initial concentrations of the reactants. And you use the initial uh, rate method, which was described previously. So consider this reaction. So we have hydrogen gas reacting with uh, iodine chloride in this reaction. And after measuring initial concentrations of iodine chloride and hydrogen gas and the initial rates, an experimental rate law, rate law was found to be K times concentration of hydrogen times concentration of ICI, or ICL, sorry, iodine chloride. Now, when you look at this overall reaction, we can see that's not consistent because obviously there must be an intermediate step that only involves one particle of ICL. That's what this would imply. So let's look at possible mechanisms here. So first step, hydrogen combines with iodine chloride, making hydrogen iodide and hydro hydrogen chloride. Okay, it's a single displacement happening here. And this step happens to be fairly slow. Well, the next thing that happens is the hydrogen iodide that's created reacts with iodine, iodide chloride, iodine chloride, and makes iodine and hydrogen chloride. This is a very, very fast step. So the overall reaction can be expressed by the hydrogen reacting with two ICLs to produce iodine and hydrogen chloride. And again, we can see that we can group the HCLs together, we group the ICLs together, and we can cancel the HIs. So in this case, the rate of the slowest step would be derived from this first step. So it's K times concentration of hydrogen times concentration of iodine chloride. So that does agree with the experimental rate law that we looked at. So that is a possible mechanism. And the K would equal the K value from the experimental step. Rate expressions from the reaction mechanism and the experimental data do agree. So possible mechanism. Now, let's take a look again, same reaction. The reaction profile for the reaction resembles the following. Here it is for potential energy versus time. And we see that the curve, the initial activation energy for the first step is higher than the activation energy for the second step. We see this is a running a downhill, so it's an exothermic reaction. Some of the things to note, the enthalpy change is the uh, enthalpy of the products minus reactants. Here it is here, difference from here to here. Activation energies can be measured from, from by measuring the distance from here to here on this scale here for potential energy. And here are some steps again. Hydrogen combines, it's a bimolecular step, making hydrogen iodide, which is the intermediate, and hydrogen chloride. And the intermediate is combining with another molecule of uh, iodine chloride to make iodine and hydrogen chloride. And again, if we cancel the intermediate, we end up with the overall step. So hydrogen iodide, again, is the intermediate. It's produced in step one and consumed in step two. So when you add the two steps above, it's the same as the overall reaction, this equation at the top. And notice if one reaction intermediate, HCA, HI, the intermediates have fully formed bonds and can be easily isolated. However, there are two transition states or activated complexes. Activated complexes sometimes don't get have fully formed chemical bonds. It's kind of a transition state between bond breaking and bond making. They have only have, uh, they have partially formed bonds and only exist intermediate uh, 
for, for very short periods of time. And in this case, this reaction mechanism agrees with the data that the activation energy, the slower step, had the greater activation energy. <clears throat> now, if the rate determining step is not the first step, let's see what we have to do. So let's consider this particular reaction, nitrogen monoxide and oxygen forming nitrogen dioxide. There's a high probability that this process is not elementary. Why? Because there's three particles involved here in the, in the reaction. The probability of three things hitting at the same time is pretty remote. So after measuring the concentrations of NO and O2, uh, using the initial rate technique where we vary, we do trials where we vary the concentration of NO while keeping the concentration of O2 the same and look at the rate change. And then we uh, vary the concentrations of O2 while keeping the concentration of NO the same. We can determine an experimental rate law that looks like this. So it's R equals K times concentration of NO squared times concentration of O2. Seems to agree with this reaction. Now, what is a possible mechanism? Well, let's take a look here. NO and NO could be colliding to make N2O2, which is an intermediate, not found in the overall reaction. This step is a fast step and happens very quickly, and it reaches an equilibrium. And then NO, N2O2, dinitrogen dioxide, hits uh, an oxygen atom with sufficient force at the right angle and makes 2NO2 but the activation energy required for this particular step is much higher. So it's slow. So what's gonna happen? Well, the NO2 is created quickly, but it just sits around because it's not consumed very fast. And the overall reaction, of course, the overall reaction agrees with the initial equation. The first step reaches equilibrium, like we said, and the NO2 is, is sitting around, it's not being consumed at the same rate it's being produced. Now the overall rate is gonna equal the K2 value times the concentration of NO2, N2O2 times the concentration of O2. Again, that's this slowest step. We do not use the overall equation, we use the um, elementary step happening which is slowest. So there is K2. So K2 is the forward rate, again, of the second step. So what I'm gonna do now is compress that screen. Everything's still the same, and let's take a look at um, the intermediate and how it can be eliminated. So intermediate has to be eliminated. The interesting thing in this expression is we can't have an intermediate in the actual rate equation. It has to be eliminated. So let's look at how we can eliminate it. <clears throat> now step one is at equilibrium, where we know the forward rate and the reverse rate are equal to each other. We know the, the k value of the forward rate is equal to the concentration of, of NO squared and the, and the uh, concentration of the reverse, this is step one again, the concentration uh, of, of uh, N2O2 times K will equal the K of the reverse step going in the backwards direction. So the K for the forward reaction divided by the K for the reverse reaction, so we're gonna divide, take this over here and divide, and is equal to K1, which is equal to the concentration of NO2 divided by the concentration of NO2 squared. Again, we've rearranged this equation. Divided both sides by the concentration of NO squared. So the intermediate, in this case, concentration of N2O2 equals K1 times the concentration of NO2. We're rearranging this equation directly above now. So you can see what's happened here. We just divided both sides by the concentration of NO squared. So Oh, sorry, we multiplied both sides by the concentration of NO squared. So if there's a division sign here, we got rid of it on this side, and now we're multiplying it by K1 on this side. 
So we're going to substitute the expression for the concentration of N2O2 in the original expression, which is up here. There's the overall rate again. And we are going to substitute the concentration of N2O2, this concentration. We're substituting K1 times the concentration of NO squared for the concentration of N2O2 in this expression. So when we do that, we get the overall rate, which is the rate of the slowest step equals to K2 times instead of N2O2. We're replacing with K1 times NO squared times O2. Notice we've just got rid of the N2O2 by substituting. So this agrees with the experimental rate expression. So we can see again that here is the reaction and we now have a rate expression that does not use an intermediate. So the rate of, the, of this particular experimental equation is equal to K times the concentration of NO squared times O2. And the rate of the slowest step is K2. Again, here's the, the slowest step here is K2 times K1 times the concentration of NO squared times O2. All right, and here it is. So the K experimental is really K2 times K1, which is K2 times K1, K for the forward reaction and K for the reverse reaction of the first reaction. So the suggested mechanism could be correct. We don't know for sure. Further experimentation would obviously need to be done. One thing you might do is try to find N2O2. Again, how do we do that? We could find it using high-speed lasers fired at the mixture to see if the characteristic uh, absorption and re-radiation of a particular wavelength of energy is detected. Now, you can, in your course pack, you can skip those two pages. And as always, make sure you do some homework to practice these types of problems. And read Petrucci, uh, study some, an example in Petrucci, and problem set three, which is on, on Q site. There are answers as well on the on Q site. So please, thank you very much for staying tuned. Hope you enjoyed it.